<laughs> hey everybody, uh, welcome back to uh, Grid Talk Online. I'm Lyle. He's Dave, <laughs> and uh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate any return viewers we may have. Um, so we're going to start it out that we're back. Actually, round seven. Round seven. Yeah, uh, Magello. Magello. Absolutely. And I've got something else to add to. I got my Magello helmet. I'm just going to get it. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Don't move. Don't go away. Don't don't move. <laughs> okay. Should I hit the pause or no? Nope. Oh, you're right there. Okay. Let's see this new helmet. The the big unveil. This is what all the riders do at Magello. They have a special Magello uh, helmet. Yeah. And <laughs> We're no I have a Magello helmet. Dave's a Mine. Nice. I'm going to get it out just for this race. Oh, wow. Holy. Beautiful. You need some practice at tearing off the... There you uh, go. Wow. Very nice stuff. Valentino Rossi, 2017. That's beautiful. Right man. there. Yeah, yeah. AGV Magello. You bet. It says it right there. Well done, man. Cool, hey? Beautiful helmet. Yeah, that's a gorgeous helmet. I got seen that it, two see, weeks ago. Seen it here first? Seen it. Well, it's 2017. So. Right on. This is Rossi. Rossi started this whole Magello helmet thing. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought it would be neat to have one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a great weekend. Yeah. Oh, was it ever, man? It was lots a great of, weekend. Lots of great excitement. weekend for Ducati. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So we're all Ducati'd up. Uh, I got my, my old fire blade <laughs> here, but, uh, but that's okay. Dave's got his Ducati. Wear a little bit of prim, prim, prim got my Primac, Primac fan, <laughs> fanboy hat on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you bet. So, okay. So back to the race here now that we've done the, the helmet reveal. Um, you know, I was actually thinking, I'm going to go, I, I want to kind of, because I'm new coming back into uh, what's happening in the world of motorbikes and, and I have such passion for yeah. MotoGP. I thought I would take a little bit of uh, a moment or two at the beginning or somewhere in our little chatter, yeah, conversation, ahead. talk, uh, to ask some questions to you, the pro, about... Um, I'm not a pro. Well, no, but just <laughs> you, you're a study of the, just, of the sport. I, it's fun for me. Yeah. But I, I thought I'd ask some questions about um, maybe other people who might be new to the sport that might want to learn some stuff. Um, so, for example, uh, concessions. We were talking a little bit about this uh, last week, and you were telling me about motorcycle manufacturers and engine concessions and right, stuff. Right, right. Um, and so I'm kind of learning as we go here, but I thought I'd invite any of our viewers to learn along with me and and Dave can kind of give some explanations on stuff here well, and there. I'll try. Yeah, as best yeah. you can. Because you haven't told me any of these questions. So. Well, so what is concessions? Well, concessions are made to teams that, that like, they have, when the bikes have been working good, like, for example, the Honda. That's if concessions lately have been about the Honda and the Yamaha. Right. And it happens all the time. The teams that, 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 fall behind the developments and the teams that need a bit more work on catching up to, let's say, Ducati now. Yeah. So Yamaha and Honda, when Aprilia came in and KTM came in, they had concessions to, so they could catch up to the, to the you know, long-standing teams. Right. So it's just the common thing that, that the, 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 the series does and the, the rules do. Right. So it helps teams with more time on the track, more tires to to test on, okay. um, more engines to have in the wings, like spare engines, and uh, okay. and it's just purely for to keep to try and keep all the teams close together. The development to help, oh, with to that. keep them close together. Yeah, you know, and it even happens in Formula One as well. Right. Yeah. Okay, so my next question is uh, a lot of talk about this lady lately. Um, about some of the specific riders 
what teams are going to for the 2025 year. And a couple of them are riding for a satellite team. Yeah. Let's explain yeah. to the viewers what is okay. a satellite team. Satellite teams are teams that don't are not manufacturers of the bikes yet. They have great mechanics, great facilities to 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 get bikes to race from manufacturers. Right. If you fi if you figure there's only like four to five manufacturers in a series, well, you can't have just four to five teams. Right. So they 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 lease out or sign contracts with the uh, the satellite teams to run their bike. With, with the satellite team's mechanics, and they have the tech support from the manufacturer right. along with that. And suspension suspension companies are like that as well. They'll, 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 suspension companies will have their, their suspension on multiple bikes right. you know, that they support. And so some of the riders we're, I'm specifically thinking about are Jorge Martin and Mark Marquez, who have been a lot in the headlights, headlines lately. Uh, about the satellite teams that they uh, ride for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thanks for that. Uh, little bit. Well, you mentioned Hoi Martin. Hoi Martin, yeah. like the satellite team would be Primark. Right. But Primark, I'm telling you, they are a significant race team. Right. They're not. I, I, I've actually, it's funny you should say that. The hat I'm wearing, I got from Primark when I was with the team in 2012. Okay. At, at, at Silverstone. Okay. And um and Randy DePunier was the rider. Okay. And his girlfriend at the time was Lauren Vickers, Canadian she was a Canadian model. Model, yeah. She gave me this hat. Wow. Yeah. And I'm so proud to have it because only the team get this hat. You can't buy this hat. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> and it's <laughs> part awesome. of the yeah. So I, the reason why I'm wearing it today is we're gonna get to the race, but there's a significant reason why I'm wearing this today. Yeah. Well, but I got, the story behind this hat was Silverstone, Primark Hospitality. I watched the race with Lauren Vickers wow. in the hospitality yeah. at Primark, and, uh, and I, I come away with this hat. Very cool. Pretty cool story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And I want to get back there someday. Yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully we will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I appreciate you giving a little bit of an explanation to myself and, and yeah. the viewers who hopefully we can all mm -hmm. learn together, um, kind of a, a little bit about MotoGP, how it's run, um, some, uh, what's the word I want to, uh, uh, some slang, I guess, or not uh, slang, just some wording about uh, technical stuff, like how we can understand it better. So we can- uh, Yeah, just terms, really just multiple terms, that, the terminology that they use. Yeah, so yeah. we can really kind of yeah. get more into it a little faster. But uh, so thanks on that. Yeah. Let's now uh, go back to round seven. Yeah, round seven. Italy, Mugello. Um, so yeah, how, how do you want to start us off? There? I, I, I want to I, I, I wanna go back to Thursday. Okay. On Thursday, the teams arrive at the track, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, it starts. They start to put a picture together of what what the weather's going to be like. It's because I I follow that weather. But what it, what we're in for, right? And it rained, heavy rain Thursday night at the gel of the track. Okay. Um. But Friday morning, it it was just slightly damp conditions, and it all dried out. And I was so happy to see that right. on on the Friday morning. Yep. Um. In the meantime, Primark announced that they are sticking with Ducati bikes. Okay, they did make an announcement. They made an official announcement. Uh, actually, it was uh, Gino Vossoi made the announcement on the Friday, and then and then Ducati followed up with a, a announcement to confirm it. Confirm that it. that yeah. Primark race team are running Ducatis in 2025 and onwards. Factory. I think it's. I think they signed a two-year deal. Factory 2025. Yeah, exactly. I, I think so. Okay. Yeah, that's what I I, 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 that's what I ad understood. understood. Yeah, right. yeah, um, um, yeah. And one thing, I guess, about the satellite teams, we kind of alluded to a little bit. Each satellite team is run a slightly a little bit differently. Uh, some of the satellite teams are getting some of the satellite teams are quite close to the manufacturers. Like I want to go back to Primark. They are a very. That's why I was so right. surprised in our episode, our previous episode when I. When when the rumors, but they were looking at like another bike. I, I just really couldn't understand that. Right. Knowing them so well, you yeah. know. Um. So, I'm happy that they're with Ducati. Yeah. I'm happy about that. 
Um, Paolo Campanotti, the, the team owner, um, I, he, he's, he has such a close relationship. He's, I always see him in the factory, in the factory paddock, in the, in the factory garage, yeah. uh, talking and, He's always there, so I, it, the body language didn't didn't make sense to me. Right, that you were looking at another bike. Right. Um, so yeah. And then uh, Grassini Racing, yeah, another satellite team, uh, actually does not have uh, what would I want to say? <clears throat> Factory twenty twenty five bikes. No, no, uh, definitely for, not for this year twenty twenty four bikes. I, I, know, I know they will. They, they're not going to. I don't think they're going to get them. Even that, I think. I think it's, I, my gut feeling is there's no way they're going to get a 2025 bike right. in the Grissini team. Okay. Which I think Alex Marquez is going to stay there, by the way. Okay. We're talking about them, you know. Yeah. He's going to stay. His brother is not interested in a satellite team. Mark, okay. Mark Marquez, no. Yeah. He said uh, to the media there in, <clears> in <throat> Italy that he's not interested in going from one satellite team to another. No. He just wants to stay with one and, uh, and make the best of yeah. it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll see if that yeah. actually comes to fruition or if he does go somewhere. Uh, Marquez, Mark Marquez, I, I didn't understand that statement that when he came out with that statement. So I didn't understand it. And the, and, I'll, and the reason why is it's odd for me for the rider to write off any team. Right. Depending on, you know, because until you see what's in front of you, what contract is in front of you or what the plan is for what's 2025, I, I just think it's a dumb statements right um yeah so let's go to the race um let's recap friday session okay yeah friday friday session oddly enough maverick vinales was the fastest time on friday okay yeah he was doing well um Cotterado, morbidelli i started following morbidelli um because he he's in the primark team and you never hear from him He's had a significant Franco crash. Morbidelli had a significant crash in Jerez right. uh, in, in the off-season on a road bike on one of these, on the, on the Pan Panigale R. Right. And he knocked himself out. He had a concussion. And the Marquez brothers were with him on the track. Okay. And they actually would have came, up, came up to um, Franco and actually stabilized him on the ground. Right. And then he, he had a severe concussion and lost about 200 200 uh, days of testing with the uh, wow. with the bike so yeah so he was out so for he so i've been and he he was he's starting to find his his rhythm i think he is too he's really yeah, franco he's really a lot of haters out there a lot of haters uh, uh, on franco Morbidelli, but i was interested he was fast on on friday right um so that was interesting yep but on the second session on on friday the cream came to the top, and Bagnaya, Rins, Acosta, Oliveira, all were were high up. You know, Bagnaya set the fastest time on okay. the on the Friday evening. Yep. Um, pra practice. Right. So yeah, so that's was, set that's set qualifying up qualifying two and one. Yep. Yeah. Was there any new speed records or anything? Or uh... the, the speed was. The speed this year was same as last year. In fact, right on the money, three, three six six point one. Point one yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was right on the money for right. speed, which told me that that they've got enough speed. Yeah. They weren't looking for more speed. Yeah, they were just looking for how to get it on the on the ground right. on the track. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. So mm -hmm. next after uh, well Q Q one Mark Marquez hate to get into q1 he, he and he's been stuck in q1 recently for a, three or four times right so um he did he he made it into q2 right away right on the on the friday yeah um q q1 um was q1 was morbidelli one and raul fernandez two so they both made it into q2 right so morbidelli again Went into Q one and made it to Q two, right? Which I thought, yeah, he's he's definitely getting Gaining his rhythm ground. going. Yeah, he's showing his legs again, coming yeah. back from his crash. <clears throat> yeah, um, one one interesting thing I noticed in Q two, um, Mar Mark Marquez and and uh, Mark Marquez was following, trying to follow other riders 
Okay. In 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 Q two. And he's back to his old tricks because that he, he's just so he has a reputation of following riders in qualifying. Right. I, and I just bugs me. It bugs me because the other riders just go off and <laughs> and, and Bagnaia set his fast his his <laughs> fastest time with on his own. I'm gonna just say under my breath: Is there anything about Mark Marquez that does not bug you? <laughs> well, well, he crashed. Marquez crashed in uh, in, in Q2. Okay. Trying to follow other, he was trying to follow. I want to say he was trying to follow another ride that. Um, I know he was trying to follow. I was trying to follow Morbidelli. Okay. But Morbidelli was that little bit ahead of him, so. Marquez, before he crashed, this is what I think happened. He was so hell bent on on closing up to Morbidelli and trying to get a draft as you come onto the straightaway, right? To get the time. So, in his old tricks of following following uh, the next rider and the front. next rider to get a fast time, he actually crashed out. So, well, that's karma. Did it impact? That's it, Marquez karma for did you. It, did it impact? Uh, it, no, it didn't. <laughs> he yeah. still got a good a good qualifying, qualifying time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, scenes where let's just pause for two seconds and learn a little bit about the qualifying. Now, uh, Q1 and Q2, how exactly does that work for our viewers or anyone who's new to the sport wants yeah. to learn? Yeah, the, the evening, the evening uh, practice on Friday, the or practice two on Friday, um, that sets the top 10 places in, in, in qualifying in the, in the two. Game. In the grid? No, in oh. the quarter, this is qualifying. You asked me. Yeah, I so, want to understand it too. So you, you asked me about Q one and Q two, right? Well, Q Q one is set on Friday. The, the, the top ten go into automatic to Q one, and in sorry Q Q two and Q one is is set by the bottom all fighting for two of the top riders to get in Q two. It's so pretty. It's pretty. Is it similar to Formula One where they go Q one? Yeah, and it, they it start out, and the top ten go to the next <laughs> yeah, qualifying. It is, it is a bit. It is a bit. It is a bit like that. Okay. Um, the, the two top. The two top guys in Q one allowed to qualify in Q two. That's what I'm trying to say. The top. Oh, that's what I'm hoping two, you're asking me. The top two in Q one. Q one go into Q two with the other top ten that was set on Friday evening. Okay. The, the, the second practice. Okay. So that's 12 of them, you know. The top 12. The top, the, then there's 12, right? Because the two comes in from... Are you with me? You don't, you don't look Not like you're exactly, with me. Not exactly, no. I don't know how, how to explain it any, any more than that. Like that's okay. The top two from Q1 go into Q2. You got that? Yeah. Right, good. So that's 12 of them because there's already 10 there. Right, yeah. And they, they battle it out for pole position. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so also, oh, getting back to Marquez about about twenty twenty five, KTM came out on the weekend and said that there's no KTM factory bike for Mark Marquez, and there's a reason for that. They signed Pedro Costa to the factory team in twenty twenty five. Exactly. Yeah. So good on you, Pedro. So <laughs> making the factory, and they're not going to get rid of Brad Binder for Mark Marquez, right? Which is a good thing. It's yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess that's your opinion. <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. So, carrying on next after the qualities, we go well, to the, well. That's they set Q two sets pole position, right? You know, yeah. And mm -hmm. then next after that, we well, Bagnaya got a a three place grid penalty for impeding Alex Marquez in practice two on the friday okay so but that doesn't that didn't affect the sprint but it put him down to fifth fifth place on the grid they did give him a grid penalty they did give him a grid penalty yeah back now i was not amused well wow. the fans were not amused <laughs> i was not amused yeah it, it was not a good but penalty if, but if you watch the uh if you watch the footage it was a legitimate penalty in mm -hmm. my mind okay um so i don't think anything was wrong done wrong there yeah um okay yeah so then on to um sprint, whilst I, I, not I noticed something um to do with pedro costa's crash um 
Still that's, have that noise on. <laughs> uh, to, I keep forgetting to turn that down. I I keep I I I noticed I noticed Pedro Costa's crash in the last race. Okay. And uh, I did notice he crashed a few times in uh, the practice. Right. He was down on the ground two or three times, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he 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 had a problem. Like he he adjusted his brake his 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 front brake. He adjusted his front brake the wrong way. Okay. I I think he adjusted it. The you know you can put the lever in or out. Right. On on the handlebar. And I think he turned it the wrong way, and I think he I think he turned it in. Yeah. So when he when he grabbed when he grabbed the, the brake and went oh crap I haven't got enough brake grab more he locked the front and crashed. So uh, that's what I think happened. Okay. Yeah. Any confirmation anywhere? Not really, Nothing. but that's right. I, I I have a hunch that that's what he did. Right. The, oh oh that's what what gave that's what I noticed that what gave me the hunch was they've marked. You put an arrow on the brake for just di direction. for direction, yeah. Gotcha. So that's what made me think he got the direction wrong Must on the adjuster. Could that's have, what I think. Could have been, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, so next after we're going into now. So now the sprint. Sprint, sprint yeah. race. Now the sprint race, yeah. Yeah. Sprint race. You want me to talk about the sprint sure. race? Sure, yeah, let's go. Go off to a, it's a it, sprint is what it says. It's a sprint race. It's a fast like they get off, they don't hang around. It's it's a panic from from the start. And sorry, they start to, for back now. Sorry to interrupt. The sprint races have it's a new thing in MotoGP. They but, don't, but, but they had that last year. They had it last year. Yeah. It was the first yeah. year they started yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And how many of the tracks around the world do they actually have? I, them all. All of them. All of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Carry on. So Bagnaia. so. Back now the brilliant start. Um, Bastini Binder, he came from nowhere. Um, uh, it was he had a he had a great start. Binder was I think eleventh or twelfth, and and he he made it right up to like I seen that. Yeah, he's just yeah. I think he come up and yeah. into fourth. Do you have anything on the on the? No, I don't. The, I didn't make sprint? a note on it. But uh, I seen when I watched the sprint, he was like eleventh, right up into I think he got us up into even fourth in the first corner. Like lightning fast start. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was. He made a great start. Binder nailed it, and then he fell back a spot or two. <laughs> yeah, before he kind of settled into his his uh, his race. Um, um, Oliveira and Quattararo took themselves out. I think on lap two, two or three. Okay. Um, Ducati, Ducati's got into it. Jorge Martin got into it with Dene Bastini uh, yeah. on lap I think four. Or five or four, yeah, and it was Jorge went wide. wrong place at the wrong time. Um, Bastini came in, and uh, Jorge hit Bastini and took him out. So Jorge first went too deep, cut under Bastini. Under Bastini and Bastini, it was come like, back at him. It was a the opposite replica of the Marquez Bagnaia crash where Marquez took <laughs> exactly. Bagnaia out. Yeah, race two, I think that was. But that's where Mike Marquez took Bagnaia out. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> similar to that, right? And yeah. of course, the guy on the outside always loses, and he lost. And yeah. Jorge went on. Well, Jorge, Jorge Martin went on to crash on his own. On his own, yeah. Several yeah. laps later, yeah, which we're not sure about. They were talking about it, but they weren't really going to detail of yeah. why that what happened. happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So in the end, with the sprint, we end up with uh, Bagnaia on Bagnaya. on the podium in first place. First place, Marquez. Mar Marquez came up again. He rode a good race, yeah. And Pedro in third. And Acosta in in third, yeah. That was the that was the, the top three, yeah. Top three, yeah. yeah. In the in the sprint podium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. Uh, actually, it was a fantastic yeah. sprint. Um, how many laps in the sprint? There's only it's, twelve. It's like a half half race. Distance. Twelve laps in the sprint. Right. Yeah, Th twenty three in the full in race. The, in the in the in the race. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we'll move on to the full race. Yeah. Um, and yeah, well, what do you think about that? First of all, Bagnaia gets his. Wow, what a start! Yeah, but he gets his grid penalty, so he goes from second. Now he's it, no, he goes from he goes from se yeah, he goes second from second to, to fifth. fifth. Yeah, because it was three three grid penalty. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and lights go out, and he gets a lightning start. Himself. Well, what a start! Like he he gets he takes off like 
like within, within two corners. Within, I think. within two corners, he's in first place from fifth. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, um, it was a, that was a great start, and uh, and they settled down very quickly though. Like they were all riding in a calm way. Right. You know, uh, very quickly. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a flowing track. I think. I think they were nervous about the tires. Um, the tire allocation this year was a little strange because um, the hard tire that they that Michelin had last year became the medium this year, and then the medium tire last year became the soft. So there were still only two choices. Okay. But but they called them. You or know, medium soft, or just medium soft. Medium soft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's an asymmetric tire, so right. harder on one side than the other. Right. And that's yeah. because there's more corners. Right. And that more. happens a lot of tracks now. Yeah. They, they do them the dual compound on, right. because of more so left than right. It's actually three compounds. The, hard, the significantly harder compound is in the middle. Yeah. And then the slightly harder. Yeah. And then soft on the other side. Slightly soft on softer one side. on one side and then even more soft on the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So lightning start. Gets I just away. thought, <clears throat> I, then something was weird was happening with uh, Mark Marquez's bike, um, and there was puffs of smoke coming off the back of the bike. Yeah, when they were coming out of the last turn onto the straightaway, I seen that. And yeah. at first, it looked like an engine problem, but it looked. Then they figured out, uh, and they were talking about Sam Crayford was talking about it. The ride had device. Was could have been an issue. Right, the rear ride that device on on the rear of the bike where they they can squat the bike down right out of a corner. Okay. Yeah, but but the thing is though, the rear ride height device has two adjustments for height on it. the The launch ride height is lower than the race ride height, ride height device and they setting, take, and they set that ride height <coughs> lower uh, at lower. race ride height when they're coming out of corners. Exactly, but you can't go as low as when you start the, on the launch ride height. Right. If that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So the launch there's the, there's a little bit of discrepancy there. I'm thinking probably the bike was going to the lower ride height set, setting out of the corner, and that was rubbing. That was too low, and it was catching the the uh. the hugger, the fender. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that could have very well yeah, been. I think that's what it was. <clears throat> right. Ride height device problem. Yeah. So then carrying on through the <clears throat> race. Um, Augusto Fernandez uh, retired. Had to retire because his ride height, ride height device failed. Okay. Completely. It failed completely. Okay. Yeah, it took out. There's a bunch of sensors. There's, um, there's a bunch of sensors for traction control close to the fender mm -hmm. on on that bike and um it's the ktm i think it is and uh it just collapsed it and he didn't have any any electronic control so on right. contraction so you had to retire the bike that bike broke basically okay. the bike broke yeah and it was the right head device that caused the problem i think yeah um I don't got a lot of notes here for the for the actual race. Uh, John Muir crashed out early. Um, he is actually yeah. Re he crashed out. He crashed out Sorry, early. Not him. Luca Marini. John Muir. Luca Marini had That's, a deal. Yeah, he's resigned. Yeah. Uh, Nakagami crashed around lap ten. But they were all riding very calmly, though. Like even though that, even like I, I noticed the very nice rhythm between most all the all the riders. Are, unless they had a problem with the bike, they all had a really good rhythm. Right. Um, and it looked like they it looked like they all got the message from the from Michelin because Michelin Michelin were telling the the riders that the medium the medium rear was the tire to to. To, to have the mm -hmm. medium rear, but only one rider chose the medium rear, right. and that was Maverick Vinales. Yeah, everyone else went to everyone soft. else chose the soft, which means they all would have had to manage the rear tire out, out of the corners on that track right. because it, it is a lot of point and shoot corners out that yeah. track. So that's probably why they were all running a very calm, like you know, 
right. smooth race yeah. to, to save that rear tire. Um, and but we get all the way through. Well, I don't know. you got some more. Well, the, the we were getting we're getting down to like four to five laps left, and it's it's only the only guys that are that are in front. Uh, Bagnaya, he's still in front. Yeah. Um, Jorge Martin. Yeah. Um, and by this time, with that many laps, and left, Bastini, there's Mar only four guys in it now. Marquez had gotten in front of Bastini. Not yet. Not yet. This was this was on this was like with five laps to go. It was Bagnaya with Martin, half second gap. Yeah. Bastini, Marquez, about a tenth of a second gap. So Marquez was Can't coming up on Bastini. Yeah. And uh, with a couple of laps left, he took he, he overtook. He, it was a good overtake on Bastini from Marquez. Yeah. Um, no drama. He gave him give him room. It was yep. a good overtake. Um, the but then I thought Mark, I thought I thought Bastini would have been done. But I th I noticed something that I thought fascinating about this is because he started gaining back on 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 Marquez. Mark Marquez. Yeah. And next minute, with another lap and a half, with about a lap and a half to go, or he was right on him. Yeah. And uh, and goes and ta overtakes him and pulls off a decent overtake. Makes the pass. Yeah. And then starts to go after Jorge and, Martin, and it was an amazing. And now I'm panicking. Now it's like now I'm panicking. Like, <laughs> but it was. Just let's just right. say how much of an amazing pass it was on Marquez. Oh, it was a good pass. It really was. Yeah, Marquez, Marquez, block pass. It was a good. Corner. It was a decent pass. Yeah, uh, it was. And and after that, Marquez had nothing. I think but, his tires were gone by then. Yeah, I but, don't think he had it to come back. What I what I want to say is, I think Bastianini played the same tire game. As Marquez, it's it's almost like Bastini was 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 in super save mode, and we know Marquez does this because he done yeah. it the last three races. Yeah, and then when they actually came to dice, it was Bastini that managed that little bit extra on his his rubber, right. which made them give him the confidence that he could repass Marquez, and then not only, not only just repass Marquez, he just took off after Jorge Martin, and yeah. I'm thinking, oh crap, like. What's this He's guy doing? <laughs> what's he doing? Like, I hope he doesn't crash. Because now. now we're all, we're talking about all factory bikes. Now, now it's now we're talking Ducati, Ducati, Ducati. factory bike, pre map bike, factory bike, and they're all coming together Dyson with up. like a lap and a half to go. Yeah, and uh, and and they're all fighting for that uh, position within the factory team because nothing's been announced. No, yet. no, I, I I I'll I'll mention that after. After after I mentioned the results here, but yeah, but he, Bagnaia then he jumped ahead because he's he's he loves that track and yeah. Ducati are made for that track. He jumped ahead to a, another half half second, but it left it left Jorge Martin right in front of Bastini, and on the last lap, Bastini overtakes Martin on Cl another amazing amazing pass. pass, dead clean, yeah, totally fair and. Side by side, Ducati's probably praying you don't crash, and and he made it stick. And it was Bagnaia, Bastianini, Martin, top three, yeah. best result ever. <laughs> Just my my dream result for the for Magello, yeah. And that's why I'm happy. Yeah. I'm so happy. You had to go to the bathroom and clean yourself. I, I had to. I, I I just had to go get the <laughs> shirt because I unless they won, I wasn't going to wear the shirt. So you know, it's like yes, yeah. I'm a Ducati fanboy. Yeah, yeah. Well, good on them, uh, factory team, for pulling that out, man. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and they had they actually ran their livery special livery this race. Yeah, uh, the Azure Blue, I think they call it. Um, tribute it, it, to the uh, Italian soccer team. It was the Italian European champions that that were in this competition. They won it last year. So football, I, uh, football, I guess we call it soccer. It's footy. Footy. It's footy. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and 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 it was it was just a great race. Very, I like I love the races like that. I I I, the, the, I don't like a lot of crashing. I like the smooth races, the technical races. I, I love those. The, yeah. I love this race. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, it was. It was. I want you. You were asking me. Well, about I was just gonna think uh, before if, I was gonna finish. Oh, I don't remember now. Um, but I was gonna go back to the ride height devices. Um, yeah. What do you think is going to happen with them in the future? You gone. think they're going to gone? 
gone. Right hand device gone. I would have done it now. Yeah. They're not. They're not. Well, look. It almost. Well, it ruined one guy's race. Right. And yeah. Who knows? Marquez was lucky. He didn't yeah. ruin his. Well, I think it did. You know, it. I think it significantly impacted his race. Uh, we don't know because we don't see the data, but I'm sure it did. Yeah. Uh, to some extent. Well, I don't know about that. Well, it wasn't. It wouldn't help the tire at the, the rear tire. Put it that way. Yeah. Rubbing like that. Well, and I think maybe that's why he didn't have the tire in the end. To, <clears throat> possibly. To come back at him. You know, possibly. Hard to say. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great race, man. Yeah. Wow. Really, really, really great. Great race. Really good. Uh, what else do we got here to talk about? Um, you were asking me about Marquez's uh, ride for 25. Okay, yeah. Let's that's what, talk yeah, a that's what you're that. asking me. So has there been any announcements? Marquez is playing hardball, I think, right now. Um, he's playing He's playing a game that um, the I, game. <laughs> don't, I don't want any other bike except a factory bike. Right. Which sounds like a toddler wanting some ice cream. I think he's got good. No, I'm only kidding. I think he's got good reason to put to put that statement out there. I mean, he's been on the bike seven races, and he's in the top three. Is he not? He he. That's a significant improvement from last year. Uh, when Mark, you see what you guys, what you Marquez guys don't realize is that at 32 <laughs> years I old, Marquez guys. At 32 years old, he's had fantastic results sure. and success. But the older, or the more, I would say older, let's not say older because I'm, I'm one to talk, but the more time goes on, it's less likely Marquez is going gonna, is gonna to win anything else or win anything significant. You got nothing, have you? Uh, I'm just you waiting for you to finish your statement. Um, and the reason why I said that, I, if you look at back to Valentino Rossi's career, he, he won. He's won nine significant championships in MotoGP, and Jordan is ninth one. He almost lost that. It was to the it was to the edge, and he was he was at a similar age to Marquez um, when he won his ninth world title. I don't really buy into the whole um, age thing. No, no. Honestly, like I said, I'm one, I'm, I shouldn't yeah. talk about age, but because I'm not young. But what you're seeing, what you're seeing now with with Mark Marquez is that you're seeing his experience riding. Yeah. The younger the younger riders are a thousand percent faster than Marquez, his, but his results don't really show that because the younger he's beaten some younger riders, right? But what? But with with. But what what the Marquez guys are not seeing is that he's basically he's basically he's, he's at the roulette table. He's put all his chips in, and he's hoping they're gonna it's gonna come up. And at thirty two years old, I don't blame him for that. You know, he had a horrendous accident in twenty twenty with broken shoulder, he, and the That's injuries cool. of that was was I thought back then he wasn't gonna come back because he broke his shoulder that much, but he did. And uh, but but at thirty two years old, he's as more time goes on, he's not going to do anything super significant. You know, I'm not saying he won't win a race. I, I'm not going to say that. But I think a, a championship over twenty two races is is not achievable. To be honest with you, not with the young riders the way they are and his age and the way he is. You I know. disagree. I disagree. No. I think he's got the talent to make it happen. Um, he just needs the proper bike under him. He's on a 23. His, his bike he's on right now is a year older than the other bikes he's right at the front with, fighting with. Uh, I think if he was on a, um, you know, a recent model, I think he might be in the lead on that whole championship race. You, you haven't listened to a word I've said. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to. I don't You've agree. You've got your, your mark as earplugs in. Yeah, and that's fine. That's okay. I don't agree. You don't want to hear it, you, you know. <laughs> But it's the truth. Yeah. And you can't handle the truth. Yeah. You can't handle the truth. And yeah. other Marquez fans can't handle the truth. <sighs> Nick. <laughs> Big Nick. Yeah. Big Nick. I'm not a good uh, – I'm just coming back into the sport. I've been away for many years. I'm not a real good guy to put up an argument to start with. Okay. Um, 
So, yeah, but honestly, I don't buy into that. I think he's got the talent. Uh, he needs the well, bike. Of course, I'm not, I never said once no. he didn't have talent. Yeah, no, I, I know. I've, I've just told you why he's, but you did why say that it, his it, experience now is actually, that's what too. he, that's what he's using. And, and you, you, you're not, you're not following me. I did hear you say something about he's acting Explanation. like a toddler <laughs> because he's, he's acting like a toddler because I, I, I could not believe when he said he did, he was not interested in Primark. Primark is a number one top team with any, any, factory team on the grid i think there's a lot of politics behind that statement um i mean I, you, th you think I because i'm wearing a hat that i'm saying that no no absolutely i'm saying that <laughs> i've been in primark man they are they are like a dead a factory team like they'll yeah. act like they 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 uh, anywhere as good as a factory team they just don't make the bike right so that's that's and you know that's where i'm at yeah and you know you haven't listened to a word I've said. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you get some. What, what do you got? You know, give me something about uh, your fanboy. Then how how good he is, or oh, he's not? <laughs> no, I I think he's good. But uh, I mean, I think I said it in our last episode, <clears throat> right? And in, uh, in six races, he's gone and passed. He's made up. We'll put it that way. Forty five places. Uh, you know, on the grid in both the sprint and the race. Yeah. You know, coming from that is that is impressive. To second. No, that's both in the sprint and the race. Yeah. And then uh, the last that's race impressive. in Catalonia from 14th to yeah. third, still on the podium. <clears throat> that's significant. It man. is. It is. Yeah. It is. And I said that last week. No, you were very kind and gentlemanly. You know, and I, I, I explained. <laughs> I also explained in the last episode why Marquez is how he's doing that type of overtake you know what did i say what did i say you were right next to me <laughs> yeah you've forgotten haven't you sometimes i'm thinking to my own self he marquez is i would say the best rider out there that has the best relationship relationship with his tires because he didn't let me finish experience so stop pointing at the camera like some 70s show <laughs> Um, <laughs> he, he 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 makes his own decisions on tires. The, the engineer is the engineer. Like his his team crew chief, Marquez knows what he what he feels good on on yeah. the bike. Yeah, and it's and he, he you know he picks his own tire, and not many riders do that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I told you that last week. Where do we go from here? Where's our next? Uh, well, there's no Formula One this weekend. Yeah, Formula One. Come um, back and see us for Canada. Yeah, Canada next is weekend? next weekend. Yeah. Um, today is the second, second of June today, and yep. we just watched the race. So um, we're hiding from the rain again because it's just soaking out there yeah. again. Boring. So so the weather sucks here for gloomy, us. Gloomy, gloomy. But it was beautiful in 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 the jello which was the main thing i was worried about that when i saw the weather on friday night and it rained for like hours yeah uh, it was i was thinking i was just dreading the gel in the rain only because of that crazy flowing track because it's a high speed track and it's dangerous in the rain right <clears throat> yeah yeah so about the grid <clears throat> luca marini signed with hrc <clears throat> luca marini Look, um, no, no, Luca Marini already already has a deal. He's, he's You're talking about uh, Alessio Spargaro has a test rider deal with HRC. I stand corrected. That, that came out the weekend yeah. as well. Yeah, so yeah. My mistake. So very, intri I'm intrigued about the Aprilia right now. Like and I, I mentioned this last week. Right. The Aprilia, the space that uh, Alessio Spargaro's made there, is another factory bike, and uh, yeah. That's that's interesting. I still, well, you made a suggestion about possibly uh, Jorge and Enea may just do the swaparoo. I I had, I had a feeling during the race today that um, Enea might be able to pull off a switcheroo. Yeah. With Pratt would go with you know switcheroo with Jorge Martin because Jorge Martin's going to Ducati and I I keep on saying this. Yeah. Switcheroo with and and the you know. 
he goes to Primark. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Now Marquez has thrown his teddy bear out the pram. Um, he doesn't want Primark. Yeah. And I hope Primark don't want him. I don't know who After would, that statement. I don't know who wouldn't want him. The guy's amazing. I if I was in charge of Primark. I still think that. If I was in charge of Primark, I'd say to Mark Marquez as manager, lose my number. Uh, let's go further down the grid. Okay. Uh, what about Trackhouse? What do you think's happening? With oh, them? Trackhouse. Um, I, I, I'd love to meet those guys. Yeah. I, that's, that's a team that I'd love to meet the new guys on the grid. Yeah. Because it's all, it would be great to get like a, a fresh perspective on, on, uh, on, on doing something like that. Like when you think about the, the car, the, it's a car race team yeah. from North Carolina. Just, Justin Marks. And he went to a race. He went to a MotoGP race um, last year. Yep. And absolutely fell in love with MotoGP. Yeah. And of course, I understand that because I've watched it my whole life. Yeah. So, so I, I heard an interview he did with, uh, with, on, on MotoGP.com and he's so excited about being in MotoGP like and I like being around people like that I'd yeah. love to be around people like that yeah you know and I'd love to, I'd love to meet him he's yeah. one guy I'd like to meet pretty and get his perspective on the excitement yeah and and you know I'm hoping he's going to bring a bit more excitement from the from the North America from the US side you know and it, Canada <laughs> Canada I don't know it, you know because it's full of Canadians it's, but, it's um, a tough sport here man we got <laughs> weather like this all the time <laughs> Uh, it's a really hard sport to try and uh, promote here, I guess. Uh, we do have some <laughs> clubs here, uh, obviously in Canada, across the country. We'll talk about them um, because that's kind of leads into really where I want to go with this channel. Um, and I might as well talk briefly a little bit about that. I did. Go ahead. I, I know nothing about what, you, what you're going to say. I, so just, uh, on you. I did invite someone from a local uh, club to come and okay. join our conversation. So okay. I haven't got 100% his, confirmation. I haven't got 100% confirmation. Who are, you, who are you talking to? What's his name? I can't say that just quite yet. Oh, my. Oh, James, <laughs> yeah. Come oh. and join us next weekend for Canada. Uh, Drama. See if I can give you a name then. Um, but, yeah, I, I kind of really want to, you know, try and help get some of these Canadian guys some exposure. I mean, I've got 50 followers maybe, so hopefully I can at least get six of them to acknowledge who that person is. <laughs> Go from there. Um, what else? I think that's it. Eh, oh, I just had a great weekend watching watching it, Mugello. Yeah. I just absolutely love it. It was good. Um, I, as a fan, I, it was the best scenario for me. You're like a little boy. And I get to talk about it to <laughs> anybody that, that – Tunes in. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm loyal. You know, He's I'm, I'm high on the jello right now. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing else. Well, and we love the helmet. And you like the, the, the tribute, the Magello yeah. tribute helmet from Valentino. Absolutely. He started all this. And he was at the race. He too. was at the race, yeah. 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 Along with uh, Giacomo Agostini. Oh, he's at everyone. He's, he's, he goes to them all. Does Giacomo he go? Agostini, yeah. yeah. He's, he's at them all, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to mention the Alaman? It's on. We yeah. just finished rookie week. I know. Rookie week, you guys I say. Slipped my mind. Practice it was, week, we say. It was on my list. Um, we might. I want to do something about that next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Because next weekend is the the, the senior it's, deal. It's not really a typical grid system the way <clears throat> the way we're used to yeah. it with with motorbike racing or car racing even where they stack up on the grid. They yeah, do it's their, a timed race. Yeah, they do their starts significantly no, it's, it, different. It's, it is no, it's. Well, they do the time. They do the start different because it's you're not you're not racing the rider. You're racing the clock. Your, your time, yeah. So the only you only you get released as a rider every ten to fifteen seconds, depending on how you how fast you are. So the the you know it's the, the rider comes to the start. He's he lets go and then, and then his clock starts and then the other rider ticks down. Yep. New goal, yep. You know, and it takes about you know a minute to set everyone loose, and uh, thirty-seven point two mile track. Can we say? Can we say one thing about the race? About uh, Michael Dunlop, the Alaman. Yeah, Michael Dunlop. Yeah, yeah. Let's give him a shout out because that's oh 
Yeah, Michael Dunlop. Yeah, he, uh, he has now matched his uh, Joey Dunlop's his uncle, I think. Yeah, yeah, his uncle. Yeah, he's matched his. Uh, yeah, I his, was his I, I was at the Allen Man when when Joey Dunlop used to go there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was the top guy. So that's pretty pretty <laughs> okay. cool. I've got a shout out there. Yeah, if you're going to yeah. do a shout out, yeah, I can yeah. do one. I want to do a shout out to David Hatch. Yeah. From, uh, from yeah, Whist I think it's Whistle Stop Production that that does his, his show, uh, the most like motorcycle experience. Yeah. Um, I followed that show. I, ca I came to Canada in 1990 from, from Liverpool, and he'd already been doing motorcycle experience for a year. And as a biker, I wanted to learn more about the Canadian uh, aspect of motorcycling. Sure. And he followed the – he did he did a, a, a set on his show about – he was promoting Canadian Superbike um, Championship right. on his show. So he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good – motorcycle dude or 30, knowledgeable. 35 years um very impressive yeah to, to hang in there for that long and i just want to say i appreciate tip our hat to i them. appreciate you know dedication like that in our sport yeah absolutely you know? yeah 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 good, good on you so. david hatch mm -hmm. keep it going we're we're good yeah um i think we're good um i think that i got nothing much else to say other than i'm pretty happy you know um yeah i'm good with that i'm lyle he's dave make it a great day come see back. you soon yeah come back again next week you bet <laughs> for the formula canada one. formula one race okay good job and that is it